Please have a seat. Good afternoon, everybody. Over the past few weeks, Vice President-elect Biden and I have announced key members of our economic and national security teams. In the 21st century, we know that the future of our economy and national security is inextricably linked with one challenge, energy. So today, uh, we're pleased to introduce the majority of the team that will lead our efforts on energy and the environment. I say the majority because uh, we are going to be doing separate announcements for the Secretary of the Interior, who's going to have uh, a lot uh, to do in, on energy policy, and obviously uh, interior or, uh, transportation and agriculture uh, will be important as well. In the next few years, the choices that we make will help determine the kind of country and world that we will leave to our children and our grandchildren. All of us know the problems that are rooted in our addiction to foreign oil. It constrains our economy, shifts wealth to hostile regimes, and leaves us dependent on unstable regions. These urgent dangers are eclipsed only by the long-term threat of climate change, which, unless we act, will lead to drought and famine abroad, devastating weather patterns, and terrible storms on our shores, and the disappearance of our coastline at home. For over three decades, we've listened to a growing chorus of warnings about our energy dependence. We've heard president after president promise to chart a new course. We've heard Congress talk about energy independence, only to pull up short in the face of opposition from special interests. We've seen Washington launch policy after policy, yet our dependence on foreign oil has only grown, even as the world's resources are disappearing. This time has to be different. This time we cannot fail, nor can we be lulled into complacency simply because the price at the pump has, for now, gone down from $4 a gallon. To control our own destiny, America must develop new forms of energy and new ways of using it. And this is not a challenge for government alone. It's a challenge for all of us. The pursuit of a new energy economy requires a sustained, all-hands-on-deck effort because the foundation of our energy independence is right here in America, in the power of wind and solar, in new crops and new technologies, in the innovation of our scientists and entrepreneurs, and the dedication and skill of our workforce. Those are the resources that we have to harness to move beyond our oil addiction and create a new hybrid economy. As we face this challenge, we can seize boundless opportunities for our people. We can create millions of jobs, starting with a 21st century economic recovery plan that puts Americans to work building wind farms, solar panels, and fuel-efficient cars. We can spark the dynamism of our economy through a long-term investment in renewable energy that will give life to new businesses and industries with good jobs that pay well and can't be outsourced. We'll make public buildings more efficient, modernize our electricity grid, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions while protecting and preserving our natural resources. We must also recognize that the solution to global climate change must be global. I spoke a few days ago with Senator John Kerry, who updated me on the recent climate negotiations in Poland. Just as we work to reduce our own emissions, we must forge international solutions to ensure that every nation is doing its part. As we do so, America will lead not just at the negotiating table, we will lead, as we always have, through innovation and discovery, through hard work and the pursuit of a common purpose. The team that I have assembled here today is uniquely suited to meet the great challenges of this defining moment. They are leading experts and accomplished managers, and they are ready to reform government and help transform our economy so that our people are more prosperous, our nation is more secure, and our planet is protected. Dr. Stephen Chu is a Nobel Prize winning physicist who has been working at the cutting edge of our nation's efforts to develop new and cleaner forms of energy. He blazed new trails as a scientist, teacher, and administrator, and has recently led the Berkeley National Laboratory in pursuing new alternative and renewable energies. Stephen is uniquely suited to be our next Secretary of Energy as we make this pursuit a guiding purpose of the Department of Energy as well as a national mission. The scientists at our national labs will have a distinguished peer at the helm. His appointment should send a signal to all 
that my administration will value science.